Hello, cool ass, it's Pablo here, and welcome back to Barca Universal, and welcome to the start of Barcelona's Copa del Rey campaign for the 2021 to 2022 season. Of course, we are indeed the holders of this competition, and we actually have won La Copa 31 times, more than any other side in Spain. And on Wednesday night, away to Linares Deportivo, our title defence starts. It will be Xavi Hernández's first Copa del Rey fixture. Expect some changes, but for Barcelona, we must progress to the next round. We want this trophy. So let's get started. And this clash will be coming to us live from the Estadio Municipal de Linarejos, and it will be coming to us at 7.30pm Spanish time. So watch out for that one, guys. And actually, at the Municipal, we are expecting a sellout crowd of 10,000 spectators, all quite close to the pitch. And that actually should make this quite a hostile atmosphere, especially in this sort of combat clash with Barca coming to town. It is also worth noting, guys, that this time must be decided on the night. So that means the option of extra time and penalties is very possible. And also, it's worth noting, there'll be no VAR in operation for this fixture. And let's begin here with our opponents for this fixture, Linares Deportivo. Well, who are they? I'm sure you're all asking. I'm sure a lot of us Barca fans actually wouldn't have known or even heard about Linares before we were drawn against them in round 32 of the Copa del Rey. And well, to be fair, you know, Linares were actually only formed as a football club back in 2009. So that tells you how much of a new team they are. Linares currently compete in the third tier of Spanish football. And funnily enough, actually, in the same league as Barca B, they've actually played against Barca B already this season. And Barca B picked up a 2-1 away win very late on there. At this very stadium, by the way, and all of Iñaki Peña, Guillem Jaime, Arnau Comas, Mikar Marmol, Xurgla, and Ilias Akomak were all involved in that game. To get to this stage of the Copa del Rey, which is actually the third round for Linares, they've already played two other fixtures. They already beat Nastic and then Alaves in the last round, who they beat 2-1. So despite sitting 17th in, the, in their domestic league, you get the feeling that, you know, Linares, they're up for the cup. In this sort of game, with their fans behind them, a sellout crowd, with Xavi's Barcelona coming to town, I think this is going to be a really good battle. Pretty hostile, tough game. That's what I'm expecting. And moving on to Barcelona, who of course come off the back of that very hard-fought victory over Mallorca in La Liga on Sunday night. I think after that game, actually, the mood right now is quite high. I feel as if we're progressing nicely as a team. The fans are very behind the players and the manager. Despite the fact that we've had a lot of players missing there in that last game, you know, the fact that we came through there, produced that big away win, you know, players like Luke de Jong getting involved. I think it's left us in a much better spot in La Liga, and it's just lifted the mood, if you like. But still, you know, with focus on the Copa, the fact is, again, we're going to be without several players. We are expected to, you know, be without over 10 players at least for this fixture. That's just a norm now, isn't it, for Barcelona? And I think Xavi is actually expected to name, you know, quite a largely rotative side. Although I'd certainly be hoping that he names a strong enough team to win this sort of game. I think out there, in these sorts of cup games, you've actually got to be really wary sometimes. I'd go strong enough. Look, would I rotate a bit? Of course I would. I think anyway, Xavi will almost be forced to rotate because we've got so many players missing and, you know, others will come back and it'll be good to introduce them into a few minutes. But just in principle, you know, I'd go pretty strong here for this sort of fixture. And I think when you're looking at the Copa del Rey as a whole, it may be the trophy that we say, yeah, let's go for this season. Of course, we've got the Spanish Super Cup coming up very soon, actually. In just a week's time, we'll be playing Real Madrid in the semi-finals of that. So just two games and that could be a trophy for Xavi's side. But I think the Copa del Rey is a big trophy. It's one, you know, we're quite dominant in. We feel a bit of pride, I feel, around it. And as I say, you know, these sorts of fixtures to start it, they can be where you are knocked off course. You know, we've already seen Real, Atleti. Big teams slip up in these sorts of fixtures all the time. So I think tomorrow what we've got to do is make sure we're on the focus, you know, right from the first minute to the last. Regarding what sort of Barcelona we're going to see tomorrow, it is quite hard to predict. A lot will depend on who's COVID negative, of course. A lot will depend on who's recovered from injuries or not. And of course, a lot will also depend on who Xavi actually decides to take. I think Xavi, in my opinion, is expected to take a lot of Barca B players with him for this game. I'm also expecting Xavi to leave quite a few players at home, the likes of Tostegan, Piquet and De Jong. I don't think will be involved. Look, I could be wrong, but I think we've got other players in those positions who can play. But what we are expected to see tomorrow is the second debut of Dani Alves as a Barcelona player. He's back, he's ready, and if he can be registered in time... He is expected to be included in the squad and the starting lineup for this game. Look, we've got to wait for the registration as ever now with Barcelona in 2021, or 2022, should I say. But still, Dani Alves, he's expected to be there. Let's see what he can do. So let's go through the predicted lineup one by one then. As I say, it, a lot will depend on who Xavi takes and who he doesn't. And a lot will also depend on if Xavi thinks, hang on a minute, I'm going to go quite strong here and bring in some of the players who didn't play against Mallorca, but are now recovered from COVID and whatnot. Or, you know, he could look the opposite way and say, hang on, I'm going to go very young, very Barca B if you like. Neto in goal, I think Neto will start this fixture. There was a bit of, you know, question marks as to whether he'll play. I think he will. Right back, I've gone Dani Alves. 
I think, you know, if he's fit, he should start. Left back, I'm going Jordi Alba. Again, you know, Jordi Alba was missing the last game through COVID. He's back now. I just play him. You know, his last game was when? Ages ago, on the on the 21st of December. Let's get Alba back in. And in defence, you know, similar sort of story. Um, Titi Longley. I know there's other options there. You've got Arnal Comas, Mikar Manmor, for example. Oscar Mingueta, you know, Eric Garcia, Piquet. There's loads of centre-backs, by the way, but look, I'd go with Longley and I'm Titi. They haven't played in a while. They're experienced players, and they can help us win this sort of tie. In midfield, Busquets has recovered from his suspension, of course, and he doesn't have COVID, I do not believe, so he should be ready to start this game and captain us in the game. Alvaro Sanders came off the bench and made his debut, so I thought I'd slot him in there. I think Dion could do with a rest. I think Nico is pulling up quite a bit of late, so I think he could do with a rest. And, of course, Pedri has got COVID now, so he's not available. So Alvaro Sanders next to Ricky Pooch, I think, is a smart thing to do. Still no Gavi, of course, for this game. And up front, I've gone for Elias on the right, Shugla on the left, and Luke Dion up front. Same front three as the one we played against Mallorca. Memphis and Ansel are still going to be left out. Abde is still not available. Of course, Braithwaite's still not available. So look, that's really what we've got is what I'd say. I think that sort of team is the sort of thing I would go for. It's quite strong. I've decided to you know, introduce some of the players who weren't playing last game, but who are now available. I'm not sure if Xavi will do that. The likes of Jordi Albambo skets I'm talking about here. I think Xavi could maybe leave them out, but I would just bring them in. You know, why not? We might as well give them the minutes there and help us win this match. But yeah, let's see what happens, guys. I think it's a strong enough Barca team. I am expecting a tough game. How would you guys line up, though? And moving on to your predictions, you guys are in confident mood ahead of this Copa tie. A lot of you guys are expecting Barca to win by three goals away to Linares Deportivo. Still quite a few voting for two plus goals, too. But what I'm going to go for is actually a narrow Barca win. I've gone for Linares Deportivo 1, Barcelona 2. I'm actually expecting a tough game here. I think these games are never easy, and I'm just not expecting us to run over Linares. I don't actually think these days, right now, with our team, we run over many teams at all. And I'm not expecting this to be much different. I'm expecting a tough game, a hostile away fixture. I think we will rotate. And I think we're going to find it tough. I really do. I think we will probably concede in the game. And let's see if we're going to scramble something together. Maybe an extra time I'm expecting a, a 2-1 win here for Barca. But it is crucial to get through these games. We've seen big teams knocked out on them before. We've been very good in previous years of doing our jobs in these sorts of fixtures. So let's carry that on in this year. I've gone for a 2-1 Barca win. Leave all of your thoughts in the comments down below regarding lineup, what you're expecting from this sort of away copper clash and also what you think the score will be in tomorrow night's fixture. I'll be here after the game to discuss it all, and goodbye.